Hey, good morning, guys. I'm on my way to work, and I uh, realized that the way I did my last video log and trying to upload it is just not going to work. Because I did the video log on my way home from work, and then started the upload when I got home, which I have, like, one little tiny half bar of service. And I thought... I kept my phone outside, which gives me like two bars that it would load. It took nine hours for the video to load, and it was like a half hour video. So, <clears throat> so you see, I had a good weekend. I'm losing my voice. Um, so, anyway, I'm going to try doing this on the way to work and then upload while I'm at work because we have Wi Fi. So, on my way to my East Central job, <laughs> it's raining, and I wanted to talk a little bit about what happened over the weekend some more of the, the Rona chapters or the Rona Chronicles, whatever you want to call it. I might change the name. The Rona Diary. Um, I know I started in the game late, but better late than never, just sharing my thoughts. Uh, so, <clears throat> on social media, I have a lot of followers, a lot of friends, and whenever I find something that's extremely intriguing or interesting um, and impactful or epic, informational, good advice, anything like that. I, I reshare um, in my profiles public so that anybody then can snag it, share it, listen to it, learn from it. That's the idea. I don't, I'm not as active in a lot of the groups anymore, um, but I'm active in my, my own page like, if, like it's a group. And um, there have been several videos shared several times that keep getting deleted and removed off of Facebook, removed off of YouTube, and I decided to mirror some of those last night. But one of them was a video of a nurse practitioner who has a very close friend that is a um, that works in a New York hospital. And the girl that works in the New York hospital that is seeing the um, travesty that is going on did not want to go on record because she did not want to lose her job other girl who's not really there decided that it needed to go viral it needed to be shared some of the situations that are going on in New York and the hospitals she said it's it can't be all the hospitals she said she only knows of this one um, but it's very busy <clears throat> and she was not um, disrespecting all hospitals and all nurses and doctors but she said, you know, goes on to explain that there are many that even before this pandemic um, that don't care, don't care about their patients and basically do the bare minimum. We all know those types of people. And even the ones that normally are good at their job have become extremely negligent out of uh, exhaustion, out of uneducation. And because, because the hospital is... Um, forcing them to use the wrong methods of healing. And one of these methods of attempting to heal and recover from this coronavirus, COVID-19, this detoxation of the body, the poisoning from 5G radiation, whatever you want to call it, still hurting people, whatever it is, um, is that they intubate them and they put them on a ventilator. And she's explaining how you know, the ventilator system is just not working. It is a death sentence that people are being, she's out and out uses the words murdered and not just her, her friend that's actually witnessing it. Being murdered. They're being left to die and rot. That's what she says. And it just, it, it upset me so much last night to hear her words because, you know, you can tell when someone's being sincere and you can tell when someone's acting. She seemed extremely sincere to me. As sincere to the point of she was, you know, uh, emotionally shocked and upset about it. So, <clears throat> that, that video is on my channel as of now. Because I also shared another video of a doctor, I think it was Thomas Cohen, C-O-W-A-N, M-D. Um, and he, it, the video's actually been on Globebusters on the beginning of one of their shows when they were talking about the 5G correlation with the virus. Um, and I've shared it on my own, uh, on its own. 
and it keeps getting taken down and keeps getting removed it keeps getting reported and the same thing happened to mine last night now I actually I couldn't download it I did a screen record of it so I ended up really tiny on the screen I don't know why if you if you do full screen it's a little bit easier to watch but you really don't need to see the guy talking you just need to hear him it's his words that are important and it was extremely valuable information and he's explaining how um, how viruses work what viruses really are and that they're not really living organisms and he explains the 5g correlation with the virus and um, radiation poisoning that we're all getting and how the electrification of earth has changed since the very early 1900s and that's when many pandemics have come out and have been labeled as flu viruses and he explains um, with all within 10 minutes how uh, because of this extreme electrification of earth and then our bodies being injected with aluminum when it comes to vaccinations and it's just become basically excuse my language a shitstorm for our bodies and it needs to be stopped and every time that video is uploaded and every time that video is shared it gets removed and I don't know how to um, you know argue it like I don't know if it's something I have to do from a laptop or I mean a, a desktop because all I have is my cell phone and then I have a, a little tablet which is basically a, a little bit bigger glorified cell phone it doesn't actually it's a little older it doesn't have quite as much capabilities and um, so and I have YouTube studio and I went in there and it told me the reasoning but I don't I have no idea how to refute it because there's no reason why YouTube should be removing that it's a doctor he is an actual medical doctor and he's speaking at a seminar or a conference he's speaking in front of people and then there's a, a whiteboard behind him he was teaching a lesson and there's absolutely no reason why it can't be on there no reason at all except that they're censoring the information that should be getting out so there's that that was a frustration last night I mean that video honestly only had like 50 views maybe a hundred I was wondering why it was going so slow and it was probably because it had been reported or whatever um, but the views only mean a lot to me because it needs to get out there I've already tried to share it a bazillion times and it wasn't on my channel this time I thought if I hit it on my channel because my channel's not that big maybe they wouldn't find it you know but this kind of information it's frustrating you know we're talking to our friends I have friends that are nurses or had been nurses retired uh, and doctors and I know they're looking at me differently right now and it's a shame because if anything they should be looking at me like wow like this is heroic what you're doing because you're standing up for the atrocities that are going on right now during a very weak part of our in our society a weak time in our country you know, you claim to be so patriotic and you, you know, love America, love the flag and, and love this country, but yet everyone's just allowing in their words and in their actions or inactions, they're just allowing the country and the government to kill us, literally kill us, slowly or quickly. And all I'm trying to do is bring out bring into the open the fact that hospitals are not dealing with this correctly and people are dying left and right because they're being ventilated and that is not the only option. Even the nurses and the doctors are saying they need to start treating this more like high, um, high altitude sickness. They're not getting enough oxygen. It's not about breathing for them like with an intubation and, and tubes and a ventilator. And there are doctors that are using, like, I would definitely have to research this more before I would ever allow it to happen to my lungs because it seems kind of new. But they are nebulizing hydrogen peroxide, and doctors are having great results with that. High doses of vitamin C. There's another doctor, not Dr. Kaufman, although he's amazing, but there's another doctor on Facebook I've been following. Um, I forget his name. He's bald. <laughs> uh... And he has also been pushing and suggesting large doses of vitamin C. 
intravenously if you have a doctor, doctor's office that would do it, or even just orally. But you take it until uh, you take it until you can your digestive system can can handle it. So high doses of vitamin C will, um, and no other better words can give you uh, diarrhea, loose stools, um, and stomach cramping and such. So you take it until that occurs, and then you you maintain that dose every hour. So like say if you can handle 500 milligrams or 1,000 milligrams, you take that every hour. Because vitamin C is water soluble, I believe, yes. Um, so the reason why you high dose frequently is because as quickly as your body can remove um, excess waste through your urine, the vitamin C is going to come out, just like a B vitamin. So you want to take that in as often as possible. Now you don't want to do it until you have straight diarrhea all the time because then that's going to dehydrate you. You don't want to make yourself sick that way. But there are ways around that as well. I mean, you can take things to kind of slow stuff down, like which could, would be a good a good idea even if you are sick anyway. You could do something like activated charcoal and, and slow some of that down. But um, do the research. People are researching that hydrochloric, hydrochloroquine. I don't know as much about that, but it seems a little less invasive than sticking a tube down your chest and having it ble uh, breathe for you because that really goes against everything your body wants to do and it's trying to get healthy and strong again and then you're, yeah, totally not what you want if you can help it. Um, even something like quinine, which I've been doing a little research on as well, like tonic water, I think you need probably higher doses than what's in tonic water, but it's been being used as well. Um, zinc, very important one. And then the, these doctors are laughing about it and my friends are getting upset. They are, I don't know anyone, pers no one personally has come to me and say, Carly, I hate what you're doing, but I see it here and there amongst each other. Wake up. If you were a nurse or you work in the medical field and you're upset at me because I'm sharing that people are being treated unwell and malpractice is being done and people are dying that should not be dying because of the way they're being treated, shame on you. Don't be mad at me. And I shared something like that on my page. Like why? So I guess it's easier to become mad at someone who is the squeaky wheel and the whistleblower who is trying to actually change this world for the better and actually trying to find the truth of this matter instead of just laying back and taking it from the government. Or just, I should say, bending over and taking it from the government. With a smile on your face. <clears throat> There's just no way. I can't do it. And if our friendships fail or suffer from it, shame on you. There is nothing that I'm sharing or doing that is disrespectful in any way. I'm trying to help the people out there that are sick. I'm not saying that it's there aren't people really getting sick. I am saying that some of the people getting sick don't have COVID-19. I am saying that a lot of those tests are false positives. A lot of those tests, people probably just have pneumonia or bronchitis or the other flu. A lot of these tests are inaccurate. And a lot of people are then, because they're being lumped into the same story as having, or, or the same diagnosis as having COVID-19, they're being, their treatment is horrific. So if someone went in there and they actually knew, oh, they have a, uh, bacterial pneumonia, they would not be on the COVID-19, you know, uh, uh, level of the hospital. And they would be allowed to see their family and their friends. And they would allow people to come in and help them with their treatment. If you're diagnosed as COVID-19, ain't nobody getting in there to help you. No one's coming in to pray with you. No one's going to be in there if you're on your last breath. No one's going to come in there and be your advocate if they're intubating you and putting you on your vent and they you don't want that. No one's going to come in and help them when you go to code and you want resuscitated. No one. No one's allowed in there. So many people are being diagnosed as that and just lumped in there and that's not their, di their diagnosis. Something needs to change. And I'm putting this out there. I don't have all the ins and outs of everything. I'm just sharing a little bit of what I shared with these professionals are saying. Go to my YouTube page and go to my uh, Facebook or social media pages and watch the links. guys 
just gotta wake up. Stop being mad over the wrong reasons. Why aren't you mad because your freedoms are being taken away while mass, m mass malpractice is being done? Why? The numbers are inflated. Why? Don't allow this to have each other turn on each other. Don't become each other's enemy. And don't hate on those people that you've been friends with for a very long time because they're actually trying to help. You know what? The government's telling you stay home, stay healthy. You're doing your part. Sounds like World War II. Don't listen to that crap. Don't let them taste you into a false sense of patriotism because you're staying home and you're keeping other people healthy. Fuck that. Excuse my language. Get up and, and do something. Get up and stand up for yourself. Stand up for the people that are dying and aren't being treated correctly. Being misdiagnosed. Dying because they're on a vent and they shouldn't have been. I'm almost at work. I'm getting wound up. Shame on you. The sunshine out. <laughs>